So today I want to talk about the subject of a state agency and prop tech. It's a subject that's cropping up in the press all the time. And a number of my clients keep asking me, you know, what, what do you think we should be doing? How should we be doing this? So I thought, why not use this recording today to give a bit of insight into what is a much greater subject and can't be captured in one video. Essentially, what I feel is important is that estate agents need to really consider this digital transformation that I've mentioned in previous vlogs. And what that actually means is you've actually got to start really engaging with the technologies that you're using, really learning and understanding the cap their capabilities and maybe exploring other tech to see if there's something better out there that can help streamline some of your processes. Obviously at the heart of all estate agents' businesses should be a great CRM and more and more that needs to become the estate agent's single source of truth. In other words, regardless of what software you're using, you want to make sure that the information that's being recorded ultimately ends up back in your CRM where you can you can actually uh, get the information at, at the tap of a finger and, and so on. So the issue is that there's a bit of an us and them going on, I think, with um, estate agency and prop tech. The estate agents feel like they're being bombarded by, you know, literally hundreds of different prop tech. And the prop tech guys are feeling like they've cracked it and the agents are maybe not so on the case because they're not taking them up on their, their new uh, bit of tech they've created to solve a problem. I think in reality, the two camps need to come together and understand each other. At Starberry, you know, one of the jobs that we spend a lot of our time is reviewing prop tech and communicating it to our clients, uh, trying to explain in layman's terms w w what's what. Uh, likewise, we have a number of prop tech clients and when we listen to their proposition, we understand with our estate agent hats on, having done 20 odd, 25 years working with estate agents, that it's not a clear proposition. It's too complicated or too hard to learn, too difficult to integrate. Um, so I think there's an element of both parties and it, and it is coming together literally this year, 2019 going into 220, I see a massive improvement in the, the, the two parties. And in some cases, they're, they're not two parties. They're becoming businesses within estate agencies that have a technical arm. But the one thing I can assure you of is that you cannot ignore it. If you ignore um, some of the technologies, some of the processes, some of the tools that you can create to improve your lead generation, your engagement with your customers, or indeed generate new revenues for your business. You just mustn't be missing out on that. You have to be getting involved in it. It means embracing it. It means signing up to blogs and reading them and actually having a passion for it. Otherwise, you know, find someone else in your business who does have a passion for it. You know, a lot of the big firms are spending a lot of money uh, making sure that they're on top of you know, not only the tech that's r ripe for the, the using now, but also some tech that is, you know, years out, um, but needs to be carefully watched. So, you know, one of the big elements that I think needs to be um, considered at all times is integrations and having a simpler way of integrating software, preferably seamlessly. So from the outside world, uh, they come into your website, they want to be able to just see a My Account and they want to do the functions that a seller wants to do and a landlord wants to do and likewise they want to be able to do the things that a buyer or a tenant wants to do. And you as a business want to have a, an easy way of viewing all that information. As part of your remit when you're looking at uh, potential new technologies and indeed the CRM that you're selecting, you've got to make sure that the phrase open API is being used and, and actually implemented. So what that essentially means is that 
all of the, the, the information that is stored, i.e. in your CRM or indeed in your website or in any of your prop tech, can flow fluidly both ways preferably. So that there isn't this sort of disjointedness that dare I say is going on in, in the majority of uh, estate agencies and, and their platforms right now. Uh, and this isn't always the estate agent's fault, it's, it's the CRM's fault. They haven't opened their doors. They've been giving them the applicant management tools, but holding the, the, the sort of keys to their chest and not letting in uh, some of the amazing prop tech that's focused on doing one thing very well. So yeah, you've got to make sure that you have a strategy and that you know what you want to achieve. You, you've got to try and create some workflows so that you can see that if that customer comes in here, I can take them all the way through these steps. And depending on what action they create, that might trigger another set of steps or create a completely different persona. So they might be seller one minute, then they're a buyer, and then they become a landlord. And in my case, I also became a tenant, all four at the very same time. But pretty well, not one of my agents that I actually registered with ever treated me in any other way that, than a landlord. Part of the strategy has got to be working out what you want to do now, what you believe uh, are the sort of features that you would allow your customers to uh, handle themselves, things that they can save, things that they can view, documentation, you know, making offers, accepting offers, that kind of thing. Or, you know, knowing that they, they're going to buy a house, so they then want to look at a mortgage, or, you know, they've just in the process of buying a house and they want a survey done, some conveyancing. All of this is extra revenue for estate agencies, which is great with the lettings ban uh, recently in place, um, which is costing a lot of lettings agents a, a, a great deal. But also on the sales side, would, why wouldn't you benefit from um, you know a number of other services, either before the sale is, is gone through or after the sale is completed? Why not get your piece of the pie? I mean, after all, all the, the customer is trusting you with the keys to their house. So I think that an estate agency is in a, an amazing uh, position in terms of trust. Um, and they actually need to just broaden out the services. So the other thing about this strategy is you've got to make sure that the software that you're reviewing is capable of connecting and sharing its data, preferably two ways, um, because you want to have it in your CRM. You might want it in a centralized data dashboard of some sort so that it's actually got some reporting on its success and, and, and how it's performing. So you're going to make sure that these softwares you're reviewing have got that capability of integrating. And you also want to be thinking ahead and thinking, what else would I like to be doing? I might want to not want to do it right now, but in the future, I would like to do that. So for example, you know, notifications. Right now, email and phone is the, is the typical form of notifying a customer. But obviously, as we know, as the sort of app world, we're getting actual notifications through the apps that we've signed up to. So native uh, Apple notifications or Google Android notifications. So it's about how can you utilize some of these systems? Or if you're still in a sort of web app environment, how can you utilize the likes of WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger? Things that people are actually looking at all day long. They're not looking at their email anymore. People don't want phone calls so frequently. So, you know, we're, we're delighted to be one of the first um, uh, companies to be able to integrate WhatsApp, WhatsApp for Business. And WhatsApp for Business is a fantastic tool because it actually will allow you to do mass notifications, specific notifications, depending on the action that your customers have, uh, have done. But yeah, so I think that the, there's a journey that you need to go on. Um, you need to create a strategy. You need to start with your CRM, or if you're looking at one, making sure that it is allowing this open approach to your data. 
And you know, there are a number of companies that we're talking with who are all at different stages. Um, and we work closely with Repit and they're launching a platform as a service in November. So that's worth exploring. And there's some, some entry level platforms like Best Agents that are, you know, also connecting uh, different data. And then there's cl uh, customers, um, CRMs such as Desres and uh, Agent OS and a number of others who are exploring this at different stages. I think it's important that estate agents bully their CRMs. They need to tell them, we need to achieve this. We need this data. We need to push data to you and we need to pull data from you and we need to put it in the hands of our customers. To me, this is absolutely imperative. And if you're not getting a thumbs up that it's in the roadmap, then you need to be starting to look elsewhere. The other thing is from a point of view of reviewing softwares, there's, you know, there's a lot of different platforms that are coming to the market. There's one called Unisu, which is all about different prop tech and reviewing prop tech. Um, we're working closely with uh, Simon Whale of Kerfuffle, which is making sense of the noise. And, uh, you know, that's an exciting platform because that is going to give you proper reviews, NPS scores of different suppliers, you know, reviews from customers, from other estate agents. And then these reviews are being aggregated into an NPS score. And then they're also being um, in-person interviews by Simon Whale and his team uh, and videos and so on. So that's very powerful. I think that there's other groups like um, ICG, the Innovation Collaboration Group, which is a consortium. There's EA Evolution, which is another group of companies. There's FIA. So more and more, there are actually some platforms and directories that are starting to collate this information. But there's also a lot of social media that you can just sign up to. You should be signing up to podcasts. You want to be signing up to YouTube video channels and email uh, subscriptions from specific companies that you just want to watch over time and really start trying to get under the bonnet. And I think that you will find that actually having a plan of attack thinking to the future, understanding where you want the data, what you want the data to do for you as a business, but also to really add value to your customer. And then ultimately, if you can afford it and, and put together a budget to create a my, your brand, my account, that actually creates this single source of truth, then you're going to actually better control the relationship with your client. Make sure that you're offering them and they're seeing the value and you offering them some fantastic uh, different services, you know, great partners. And hopefully this will increase your deal flow. It'll cre increase customer satisfaction and ultimately improve your return on investment, your ROI. Uh, it's a drum that we, you'll be finding that Starberry is banging this uh, coming year and, and going forward. Um, because all of us and all our clients want to make more money, but we want to offer fantastic services to our customers in the process. So I hope this has been useful. I think that there will be a series of videos about the prop tech sector and the, the marriage between prop tech and real estate. And hopefully we're going to be able to deliver some really exciting uh, user cases and, and also recommendations in the forthcoming weeks and months. So as always at Starberry, we like to create awesomeness, but deliver results. <laughs>